Hello friends, this is Raj Shekhar and I am going to give you the basic information about the memory system in computer organization. This is the textbook of uh, Carl Hamacher by the publications of Tata Migrahill, Hill, the fifth chapter. Now I am going to reveal what are the different contents present in this memory system. Does we require uh, this memory system actually in the computer? So let us enter into the topic. These are the things that we are going to discuss in this chapter. There is the basic memory circuits, organization of uh, main memory, cache memory, virtual memory, and then the secondary storage. These are the different uh, categories of memories. Actually, we need to think one thing. Does uh, we require all these categories? Memory circuit, okay, main memory, cache memory, virtual memory, secondary storage. Absolutely, we can say that all these memories are mandatory for us. Why? Because in today's world, we need to, uh, we have a every user or every person thinks just like uh, I have a memory with increased size, increased speed and with a low cost. Absolutely, that is, this is not possible in today's world well, because if we have the memory with increased size and of course it may be take a cost less but the speed is also less. If you want a more speedest device, it will take uh, more cost. So to satisfy all these requirements that is size, speed and cost criteria, we require all these memories called main memory, cache memory, virtual memory, secondary storage and some other so extra storage devices whatever it may be in the world. Right? To synchronize all these memories, we require different memories. Let us enter into the topic basic memory circuits. In the basic memory circuits, the first topic reveals about the different uh, circuits for designing such a kind of memories that main memory and secondary memory and so on and they discuss about the cache memory and then virtual memory mechanism and the secondary storage mechanism. In the today's session, we will discuss about some basic concepts of memory, that is the basic introduction about the memory concepts. Right, in this memory concepts, the maximum size of the memory that can be used in any computer determined by the addressing scheme, that is the most generally used pronunciation called 16-bit computer, 32-bit computer or 64-bit computer. What does it mean is, uh, if, uh, that it, if I said uh, my computer is 32-bit computer, that is the processor can able to do its operations in a 32-bit manner. If I am using 64-bit computer, the processor can able to do its operations in a 64-bit approach. That is, the processor can able to allocate 32-bit address length or 64-bit address length. If my computer consists of 16-bit addresses, it can able to generate 2 power 16, that is 64 memory locations on the computer. If I am using a 32 bit computer <coughs> that is 2 power 32 around uh, 4 GB. If I am using 40 bit it is only around 1 tera address locations. It is uh, too most. Then think two if it is a 64 bit uh, it can generate uh, <coughs> so many teras. Right. Mo most modern computers are byte addressable. What does it mean? The byte addressability is a basic concept which assigns addresses for the bytes rather than words. Here the word is a combination of bits or group of bytes. That is if I said if it is a 16 bit or 32 bit or 64 bit computer, if I am taking example of 32 bit computer, if my computer is a 32 bit computer, each word size is 32 bit. Right? In the, in the, in the to total 32 bit we have totally 4 addresses that is 4 bytes. 4 bytes consists of 4 addresses. Right. How we can give the addresses? And remember one thing, the processor must and surely takes the data in the form of words. If I want, if the, if the processor wants to access the data from this uh, first byte, it can directly select the entire word that is 0, 1, 2, 3. The processor selects these 4 bytes of information. And of course, it may take the only Required by required byte information, but it selects the entire word. Right. How to assign these addresses? Suppose if I am taking 2 power 16, 16 bit addresses, 2 power 16 is totally 64,000 memory locations, so 64k memory locations. So it starts from 0 to 2 power k minus 1. Here k denotes 16. If it is 16 bit 32, if it is 32, 2 power 32 minus 1, 64, 2 power 64 minus 1, and so on. So, to assign the addresses for these bytes, we have two approaches that is begin DN approach and little end DN approach. In the begin DN approach, in the, our begin DN assignment, 
the addresses starts from the MSB position that is the left side position MSB position denotes zero here so word address is zero so word address is the leftmost bit position the leftmost byte address position similarly if we go to the little Indian assignment it takes from the right side right to left approach that is here the word address is LSB position address here that is begin in assignment in begin in assignment the word address is MSB position address here the MSB position denotes byte address right MSB 0 similarly LSB and some of the examples uh, for this is for uh, the most begin in assignment is generally used in 68000 processor developed by the Motorola and little Indian assignment is generally used by the Intel processors and of course some of the processors may integrate both this according to the requirement big Indian or little Indian this processors is a general example for the ARM is the processor name which can be used in either either both big Indian assignment or little Indian assignment that's according to the requirement right let us enter in the traditional architecture of the basic introduction about inter interaction about the processor interaction about the processor and the main memory right in the processor we have many more circuits like program counter um, MAR, MDR, instruction register right and so on ALU, general, general purpose registers and so on many more content present in the processor but we don't need to talk about all these things now we are going to discuss about MAR and NDR right these are the two registers which can be able to connect to the external memory that is main memory and the remaining all processors uh, real use something else whatever it may be those are all communicated internally by in the processor itself but if any information wants wanted by the processor it's been taken from the main memory to the processor with the help of this MDR otherwise if you want to store some information to the memory again also requires MDR that is to locate any address in the main memory that can be managed by the MAR memory address register MDR stands for memory data register the name itself contains the solution MAR memory address register which is used to find the particular location in the memory which is k bit address bus if I'm using 16 uh, bit computer k is 16 if I'm using 13 bit computer 32 bit computer the k is 32 if I'm using 64 similarly 64 is the k size so here if I'm using 32 bit address bus that is my computer size is 32 bit so 2 power 32 around 4 GB memory locations so the memory can be able to process the memory size is 4 giga memory locations right MAR and MDR these two are the only registers which can be able to access the mem memory main memory right MDR is n bit data lines here the bus consists of n bit data lines which is used to retrieve the n bits from the selected word taken from the memory right we are using one more control line so read write control line and memory function completed this is one of the control line the read write control line denotes the read write control line is 0 for write operation it is 1 for read operation that is if the processor wants to do any write operation onto the memory so the read write control line is got to 0 similarly for uh, read operation the read write control line reaches to 1 this is the basic connection of the memory to the processor let us discuss about this some basic concepts so that is a block transfer block transfer is nothing but the bulk amount of uh, data accessing memory access time is generally the total time required to access in a specific memory specific memory location or specific memory word into the memory location under the memory right next one more uh, thing is the memory cycle time here the memory cycle time is the total time delay between two successive memory operations right again I'm repeating the time delay between two successive memory operations that is to consecutive memory read operations or something else which is actually too larger than the memory access time of the computer next RAM, RAM stands for random access memory that is any location can be accessed for a read or write operation in some fixed amount of time that is if I want to access uh, the starting location that is 0th location it takes uh, assume that as 2 nanoseconds of time it takes 2 nanoseconds of time to access the 0th address that is 0th word uh, from the memory 
and similarly it takes the same time to access even the last word that is in the middle word even last word or something else yeah, somewhere else in between the memory it will take the equal amount of time that is if you want to access the 0th uh, word it takes 2 nanoseconds if you want to access 10th word it takes 2 nanoseconds if you want to access 30th word it takes 2 nanoseconds and similarly if it takes if you want to access the last word it also takes the 2 nanoseconds of time that is equal amount of time so that's why it is called random access memory and of course if you compare this with a rom read only memory some misnomer this is some misnomer accuracy that is why because rom read only memory is also the primary memory but it is also the random accessing approach so that's why i called uh, called it as a misnomer that ram and rom both are random accessing approach now we need to discuss about one more thing one more memory called cache memory which is used to reduce the speed gap between the processor as well as main memory we will discuss this about this topic in later classes virtual memory and memory management unit virtual memory this is one of the very very important concept why because if you have if it, if it doesn't have any sufficient main memory it uses some of the memory from the external hard disk as primary memory that is as main memory so whatever it may be the memory that you have taken from the hard disk is simply said to be the virtual memory that can be also treated as main memory by the operating system and all these things can be managed by this memory management unit so that's about it in the later classes we'll discuss about the semiconductor ram memories thank you friends